because it is true. I mean, the sci-fi channel was relatively easy because it was um, a kind of young and funky group of people in that company. But if you're going in to meet the marketing director and the chief executive of a, a large corporate company and you said, I'm going to put you in trance, they probably wouldn't return the call or turn up to the meeting. Mm. So, I mean, this is a little while back now. This is more than 10 years ago. But um, when actually a lot of these things weren't as well known as they are now. You know, it's, uh, uh, it, was, it was more fringe than it is now. So I used to talk about creative visualizations. And then when people were in the room would then talk about what it was. <laughs> and, um, but you still get people who were very reluctant. And I, I remember one particular woman who was, um, I think, the marketing director of a big company. She was based in Paris. And she says, uh, at the beginning of the meeting, she says, I tell you now um, that there's no way you could hypnotize me. Somebody tried on me once before, and there's no possibility. So um, I don't know what I'm going to do this meeting. And I said, well, don't worry. Clearly, it's not possible. Why don't you just sit there and relax and kind of plan your week or something in your head? And we'll get on with it. And she, within 10 minutes, she was in the deepest trance I've seen really? in that context and kind of came out uh, kind of astonished by what, what the journey she'd been on. So um, at some level, it's, it's very, very enjoyable to do it in the context that none of us expect, in the corporate context. You know, we, I work with people who were, were coming up with, you know, seriously important ideas for big companies. And to have everybody there um, in their suits, get, with their heads kind of dropping onto their chests. Yeah imagining what their company could be like in 15 years' time, 20 years' time, or 100 years' time, and coming up with ideas for the company like that. It was, it was yeah. great. Um, I mean, the, main, the main reason we used it was, apart from it being fun, it's a very, very quick way of getting to good ideas because most of us have got the, the conscious mind and the, you know, the obligation, the stresses of everyday life get in the way of creativity. Yeah. So I was very interested in how we can be creative quickly. So I just wondered, you know, like when you watch the TV and you see all these adverts, how much yeah. of them are created by going into like a deeper, deeper level of trance? Yeah, yeah, that's it's, it's interesting. This um, one one thing um, I know from being in that industry, uh, well, any kind of creative industry, is that anything we see is most likely to be a diluted version of something even better behind it. So if you think an advert is good, then behind it is something that's probably even better. Yeah. And if you see a, 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 a nice bit of architecture or a, um, a poster on the street or a piece of art or uh, any kind of idea that manifests around us, behind it is something even more beautiful. So it's almost like a, a utopian design behind everything that we see and we mm. experience. But in terms of creativity... Yeah, I think creative pe people who, are, who go into that as a job, they don't like to question how they do it, but they are naturally probably getting into a, a, a light trance state, yes. Mm. So they will, I mean, creators will always have been, in, in, in our career, would have been slagged off because nobody regarded them as doing any proper work because they'd sit in their office with their feet on the table, reading the newspaper, playing pool. And uh, But those are the ways that you would get your brain into a, well, you're changing the frequency of your brain, actually. Mm. You know, the, the way, uh, the light trance. Because most of us exist in the kind of, with the brain and beta frequency as an adult. And when you, when you do relax, the brain actually switches frequency to alpha uh, and changes even more if you relax even more deeply. Um, and most of us go into that light trance a few times during the day. So you might go into it in the shower or when you're going for a walk or driving the car, when you're driving the car and you, you know, when the miles disappear, you're on the motorway and you suddenly notice you're at junction 27 and the last junction, remember, is junction 21. The very scary moments when time disappears. Um, but we're in a light trance in those day, in, at those times and it's an incredibly creative and actually incredibly healing state as well. Mm. Um, so I was very interested about how to conjure up that state um, so I could use it. So if I was stressed out, and I couldn't come up with an idea. I could actually get myself into that state to come up with an idea more quickly. Yeah. 
the brother was in a, a very minor um, car accident where he was, him and his friend were sitting in the cab and um, some guys were in a van and they didn't see that they'd stopped or parked and they came crashing in the back of their car. But they, they, they knew this van was coming. They knew there was, there was about to be hit. But in the moment they were hit, he said that time just slowed down and he yeah. could think with absolute clarity what to do, where to position himself. And what happened in a fraction of a second was almost like it took about 10 seconds, just yeah, high resolution astonishing. time. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It'd be nice if it could live like that, wouldn't it? If it everything would just slowed down. That's probably to do it. What's that, the production of adrenaline or something, I think? Probably is, isn't it? Yeah. But it just shows you, really, because we know this is a really think, uh, deep thing to say, but you look at flies, you look yeah. at different insects, and um, they're whizzing around really, really quickly. Yeah. But are they? Actually, they're probably moving around relative to themselves really slowly. Yeah, And yeah, thinking, yeah. those humans just zip around. No, not, <laughs> not, actually, not zipping around, are we? What would we be doing compared to them? We'd be really um, slow, wouldn't we? That's and right. We're like tortoises, kind of moving. <laughs> 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 Why don't those humans ever move? Yeah, they're trying to <laughs> squat me. Oh, they're so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but because um, I know you worked on the one of the orange um, ads or something, but there was a couple of years ago, Orange were running an advert where they were saying, I am everyone, or something like that, where it was almost like, at the time I got into this concept where there's a unity thing, where there's only one of us here, or something like that, and that actually, there's only one uh, supreme being in the whole universe, and we're just different aspects of that kind of thing, like really a spiritual concept of unity. And then Orange were kind of running this advert, that I am everyone, and sort of showing all these different faces, but really they're one. And it was kind of... Oh, it sounds quite a spiritual concept. They were trying Absolutely to Absolutely get... is, yeah. I vaguely remember, because I, I probably wasn't in the UK, but I vaguely remember seeing some of that. And that is, I mean, that's probably creatives who are interested in this area, who kind of read something about this and then think it'd be a good idea for a for an advert for Orange. But, I mean, that is a, that's a, a hugely radical idea, isn't it, around reality? Because mm, we're all connected. Uh, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it, I think it's one thing to... And I'm very interested in this, and there's the the, the philosophical aspect of it is uh, Advaita, and you know about Advaita? Advaita. Uh, Advaita is, is uh, the philosophy that means, um, literally means not two, so it means one, but right. not two. And it's exactly what you're talking about, it's the idea that we are all one, all is one, and the... The, the fact the the idea that we're separate is just that it's an idea or it's an illusion it's a it's a, just something that we 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 see but isn't the truth the truth is that we are all one mm. and it, it pops up again it is pop, I, I like the fact that you've seen it popping up in advertising but it pops up in 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 philosophies in religions and in literature all over the place throughout time the idea that we are one and um yeah, we kind of refer to it. It's a bit like a spiritual cliche, isn't it? That we're one. Mm. You know, I mean, even Bono talks about we're one, but we're not the same. Well, well, I have to disagree with Bono because if we are one, we are the same. Mm. <laughs> actually, you can't Paradise. be anything else if you are one. It means that difference is actually part of the illusion. That's all it is. Yeah. Uh, but it's a very, it is clearly a very, very difficult concept to understand, if not impossible. Yes. Uh, and if that is reality, it's a beautiful thing, and that. And in a sense, fuck, it came out of some perception of some of that, actually. Yeah. Um, because we, we were very fascinated by this, by this perception or this idea. Yeah. That um, the, the, way it's, the way one can explain it sometimes is if, if we are all one, if all is one, then the idea that I'm separate from you is, is just an idea. Mm. The idea of the past is just an idea. The idea of the future is just an idea. The idea of anything beyond where I am and what's happening here is an idea. And also, if we are all one, then good and bad don't exist. Better and worse don't exist. It's the, it's the true source of non-judgment. Yeah. Um, and it's a, it's a very, very beautiful idea. And also, things we're not going anywhere. There's no, there's no purpose to it. There's no intention. There's just this as it is. And uh, that did partly inspire, fuck it, we, a kind of realisation that things didn't matter so much, if at all. Mm. <laughs> I do know what you mean. There was a thing on a, a documentary I was watching last year, and it's called um, about the I am, I am thing. Yeah. And, they, and they kind of said, what it should have been was not I am, I am. It was um, I am that I am. 
Yeah. So it's like everything you look at, I am that. I am. Yeah. I am that telephone. <laughs> I am. That's right. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, and you think, you know, I wonder if that philosophy all the way back then is just the same idea that we're all run one really, aren't we? You know. Yeah, the I am that thing 